glass of a convex lens bulges outwards in the middle. It is thick at the centre and thin at the edges. It is called a convex lens, but very often it is called a converging lens because that is what it does to the light. It converges the light. This is the scene outside my window. But if I turn to the opposite wall and hold the lens up, it will converge, it will bring together the light from outside the window into a focus, into a picture. When we draw the lens on a diagram, it is usual to draw it on a line called the principal axis, that is the line which is passing straight through at right angles to the centre of the lens. The lens is usually drawn easily like this, the little arrow, but you can, if you wish, draw it like a convex lens. Rays of light meeting a convex lens will pass through one point. The ray of light passing through along the principal axis, straight through the middle of the lens, will simply pass straight through. A ray of light at each edge will be converged, will be brought together to a focal point. That point is called the focal point or the principal focus. We can see the same thing if we shine a bright red beam of light, a laser beam, towards the lens, using some talcum powder to show up the beam. A ray of light passing through the centre of the lens will pass straight through. If we use the edge of the lens, the light is turned, refracted, towards the focal point. Similarly, if we use the other edge of the lens, the light is turned in the opposite direction, but towards the same focal point. Using two beams at once, we can see that action. A key fact that we use when we construct ray diagrams is that the little bit of glass at the centre of the lens has parallel sides. The faces of the glass of the lens are parallel. And therefore, when a ray of light goes through, it is not refracted, it is not deviated. That applies not only for a ray of light going along the principal axis, but for one which is coming in at an angle, either one direction or the other. Showing this again with a real lens, the ray of light passing straight through along the principal axis is not deviated. Neither is it when the lens is turned, providing it passes through the centre of that lens. We use that when we're drawing ray diagrams. I suggest you use graph paper when you draw a ray diagram, because the scale is easier to see and to organise. I'm using a simple scale here, where each little square represents one centimetre. There are 60 between the object and the lens, so it's 60 centimetres and 15 from the focal point to the lens, so the focal length is 15 centimetres. The vertical scale is full size, so I have drawn the object 8 millimetres tall. A ray of light from the top of the object, because rays of light will spread in all directions, but a ray of light from the top of the object going along the principal axis, parallel to the principal axis, will be refracted through the focal point as we've seen in the previous demonstrations. A ray of light going from the top of the object through the centre of the lens will not be refracted, it will go straight through. Again, we have seen that on a real lens. Where these two cross must be where the image falls, because the image must be somewhere along both lines. The bottom of the image must be somewhere along the principal axis, since that ray of light again goes straight through the centre of the lens. It follows then the image must be exactly there where the lines cross. This is a real image and it's a real image because it's really there. It can be projected onto a screen as I'll show you in a few minutes. 
Two other things that we can say about the image is that it is upside down, it is inverted, and it is smaller. We can calculate the magnification easily from the diagram. The object was 8mm tall and the image, if you look carefully, is 3mm tall. The magnification or, is therefore a fraction, it is 3 eighths. Using a real situation we have a lamp and the lens and further along the screen and you can see the image is bright, projected onto a screen and smaller than the original lamp. Let's see the effect if we move the object much close to the lens. On my scale, 25 centimeters from the lens. Again, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis is refracted through the focal point. A ray of light passing straight through the center of the lens is unrefracted. They cross further away from the lens and the image, again inverted, but is larger than the original object. Calculating the magnification, the original object was 8mm tall and looking at the diagram, the real image is 12 millimeters tall. So 12 divided by 8 is a magnification of 1.5. Looking at this again with a real lens, we'll rearrange our equipment so that the object is much closer to the lens. The image then is further away and enlarged, it is magnified. These two arrangements of a simple convex lens or converging lens have two applications. The first arrangement is used in cameras and in fact applies in your eyes as well, the lens in your eye producing an image on the retina. The second arrangement is used in projectors such as cinema projectors and that is where a small object or picture is enlarged, is projected onto a large screen. Maybe the most obvious use of convex or converging lens is as a magnifying glass. We must all be familiar with that. So let's have a look at the arrangement that produces this enlarged image. Replacing the object closer to the lens, 10 little squares on my diagram, which is 10 centimeters, within the focal length, which is 15 centimeters. The focal point is marked on both sides of the lens, since the lens is reversible. A ray of light travelling towards the lens, parallel to principal axis, remember, is refracted through the focal point. A ray of light travelling straight through the lens continues straight on. These rays of light obviously do not meet. However, supposing you put your eye in the path of that light, an eye being absolutely brilliantly drawn here, as you can see, then that light appears to be coming from somewhere behind the lens. The eye is tricked into thinking that there is an image beyond the lens because that's where the light seems to be coming from. And the image seems to be here where these two lines cross. It is upright but key. It is magnified. It's not really there you could not put it onto a screen, you could not project it onto a screen. It is a virtual image. It seems to be there, the eye is tricked into thinking it's there, but it is not really there. It is the right way up and it is magnified. And we can calculate that magnification. But remember it is a virtual image, it's not really there, we cannot project it. The magnification is well, the object height was 8mm and the image height here is 22. So the magnification is 2.75. One arrangement which I'll quickly mention because it's often drawn in examination papers or questioned in examination papers is when the object is on the focal point. In that case, the rays of light which we're drawing here are parallel they don't meet whether we extend them backwards or 
forwards. The eye, however, has a lens in it, and it will focus those onto the retina. So the image that is seen is still a magnified, though virtual, image. This is often referred to as normal adjustment for the lens. There are some notes available that you can see here, which you can either copy from the screen directly from the video, or go to the website for a high quality image. Thank you for watching. Thank you.